Welcome to St. Columba Cathedral, the central church of the Diocese of Youngstown. I'm Sister Joyce Canditti, the director of the Office for Religious for the Diocese of Youngstown. We are bringing you this Mass of Ordination to the Transitional Diaconate through the services of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. And we welcome those of you who are live streaming this special event. Today, Matthew Hummerkhaus, Ryan Furlong, and Matthew Zwilling will be ordained to the diaconate. This is for each of them a step towards their ordination as priest. Bishop George Murray will be presiding and conferring the sacrament. Concelebrating priests for this Mass include the priests of the Diocese of Youngstown and visiting clergy from other dioceses around the country. Deacon Randy Smith from St. Joseph Church in Massillon will serve as Deacon of the Word. Diocesan seminarians will serve today's liturgy. The music will be provided by the St. Columba Cathedral Choir under the direction of Dr. Daniel Leguinia, Cathedral Organist and Choir Master. Cantors for today's Mass include William Ambert and Colleen Harris. The diaconate is one of the most ancient ministries in the church. It was established by the apostles themselves to meet the needs of the poor in the Christian community of Jerusalem. The word deacon literally means servant or waiter on tables. The diaconate almost immediately evolved. They started out by taking care of the corporal works of mercy but soon became proclaimers of the Word of God. The deacon, St. Stephen, became the first martyr of the church because of his ability to explain and defend the faith. The deacon, Philip, became one of the first missionaries taking the Word of God outside the Holy Land, converting the Ethiopian court official on his way home. The office of permanent deacon was re-established by the Second Vatican Council and has been a great blessing to the Church around the world. The attitude of service to the needy and fidelity to the Word of God remains the foundation to all ordained ministry. Deacons preach, teach, and serve at the table of the Lord and are official witnesses of the sacrament of marriage for the Church. Matthew Hummerkhaus, Ryan Furlong, and Matthew Zwilling are accepting this office today as a step toward their ordination as priest. It is commonly called the transitional diaconate. The sacramental and pastoral experiences, however, that these men will have during their time as a deacon will prepare them for a lifetime of ministry as priest. We invite you to join us in the prayerful spirit in which we began, ye watchers and ye holy ones.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. I welcome all of you to the Cathedral of St. Columba for the ordination of three of our brothers to the diaconate. Together let us pray that the Holy Spirit will be with them to guide them so that they may complete their studies and become priests. Not only become priests, but become excellent priests who show us the word and the example of life in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We have concluded with the introductory rites. We now begin the Liturgy of the Word. Christian Marcinek will do the first reading from the Old Testament Book of Numbers. A reading from the Book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, Summon the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron the priest as his assistants. They shall discharge his obligations and those of the whole community before the meeting tent by serving at the dwelling. They shall have custody of all the furnishings of the meeting tent and discharge the duties of the children of Israel in the service of the dwelling. You shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have been set aside from among the children of Israel as dedicated to me. The word of the Lord. In response to the first reading, the congregation will sing Psalm 96, Go Out to the World.
Arthur Bodenschatz will now read from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful, hidden things, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves, for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. The word of the Lord. Permanent deacon Randy Smith from St. Joseph Church in Massillon will proclaim the gospel from St. John. Following the gospel, Deacon Smith will call forth the candidates within the community. They respond that they are willing and ready to be ordained. Then Father John Jarek, vicar for clergy, presents the candidates to the bishop and testifies to their worthiness. All present will assent to the choice by saying, Thanks be to God. Then Bishop Mary will give us the homily. all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always until the end of the world. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, 
but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that where, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Ryan Furlong. Matthew Humrickhaus. Matthew Zwilling. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Please join me in congratulating these men. Ryan, Matthew, Matthew, my brothers in Christ. In a moment through the ancient ritual, the imposition of hands and the prayer of consecration, you will be ordained deacons of the Roman Catholic Church of Jesus Christ. This is a joyful day for you and for your families and for all of us, clergy and laity, who comprise the local church of the Diocese of Youngstown. We are all very proud of you and happy that you have committed yourself to following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. I am sincerely grateful to your parents, to your friends who have encouraged you over the years. And I look forward to working, working closely with you in our shared ministry of proclaiming the gospel. The office of deacon enjoys a rich history and its own unique significance. Today you are called and consecrated to exercise that ministry in three traditional and very important ways. By proclaiming the word of God, assisting at the altar, and performing works of charity. Such powerful expectations demand courage and determination from each one of you. They also require careful consideration, which is why I now invite you to explore the meaning of those callings as you stand before the people of God. First, let us consider the responsibility you will have to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. I hope that you will preach in eloquent words and connect with people's lives and experiences. But I also hope that you will preach not only in words, but through your entire life. A famous homilist who has 
passed on to God, once said that what the world outside these walls ask of you is that you attest to what you have seen and proclaim what you have heard and testify to what you have touched. What today's men and women look for in you and expect from you is some sign that you have experienced what you are proclaiming. Therein lies the key to effective preaching. If you strive to preach in a way that enables people to see that you are also on the journey to Christ, you will touch their hearts and bring them closer. They will see him because you will be living witnesses of his love. Therefore, always yearn to be companions of Jesus Christ. There is no greater gift you can give your people than the example of how Jesus has redeemed you. Likewise, you are called to assist priests at the altar. It will be your sacred task to lead the people in the acknowledgement of their sins. Make ready the altar for sacrifice and distribute the body and blood of Christ to the community of believers. In these actions, you should always display true reverence and prayerful attention to detail in order to help the faithful appropriately prepare for the reception of Holy Communion. The third traditional ministry of the deacon is the exercise of charity, and it is, in fact, the oldest ministry. As a deacon, you must be exemplary in caring for the poor. Care for the man who has lost his job and has no hope. Care for the woman who comes to the rectory door looking for food. Visit the sick in the nursing homes and the hospitals. Listen to those who are confused. Care well, and you will teach your brothers and sisters in faith to care. From you, they will develop a selfless desire for the common good. They will hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God and will not be satisfied until justice is done. This morning, here at the cathedral, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will promise to live and to serve as deacons in communities throughout our diocese. To sustain that spirit and promise and to fend off temptations to rationalize it or minimize it or compromise it, you will need to commit yourselves to serious daily prayer. Only through prayer will you find the strength to faithfully discharge this lifelong commitment. Only with prayer will you quell the fears that you might have about the success of your ministry. Only in prayer will you hear the authentic voice of God. Come then, my brothers. Come and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and through him, with him, and in him, know that all things are possible. Through him, with him, and in him, you will prostrate yourselves before the altar and rise deacons of the Lord. May God be always with you, and may you bless all of us with your dedication and your love of the gospel. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated to the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle urges, and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. Those of you who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, 
Do you resolve to keep forever the commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom in the service of God and man? Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? Ryan, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Matthew, do you promise obedience and respect to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Matthew, do you promise obedience and respect to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the holy order of the diaconate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have entered the liturgy of ordination, and the bishop has examined the candidate asking him to openly declare his intention to undertake the office of deacon. Just before the order of deacon is conferred, the litany of the saints is now prayed on behalf of the candidate. The candidates lie prostrate on the floor in the gesture of humility, signifying their total dependence on God. The prostration before the altar while the saints are being invoked is always a very moving moment for those being ordained. It reminds them of the absolute necessity for holiness if they are to be a true disciple of the Lord and meet the deepest needs of God's people with their ministry. Following that, there will be the laying on of hands in complete silence the bishop will lay his hands on the head of the candidates. This ancient sign from the biblical times has been used throughout the history of the church for the conferral of the sacrament of holy orders on deacons, priests, and bishops. At the conclusion of the prayer of consecration, all will respond by singing Amen. The laying on of hands and the prayer of consecration are at the heart of the ordination ceremony. The newly ordained deacons will then be vested in a stole and dalmatic, symbols of their ministry. Vesting them will be Deacon Randy Smith and Deacon Chris Germack, and Father David Bridling, Father Zachary Coulter, Father Paul Rui, and Father Leo Werlin. The bishop will then present the newly ordained deacons with the Book of the Gospels, charging them to proclaim God's word and live by it. The bishop gives the deacons a greeting of peace. Then all ordained deacons present extend to the new deacons a greeting of peace, welcoming them into the community of deacons. of Siena, pray for us. St. Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Mary, 
bless you. Pray for us. St. Louis de Montfort, pray for us. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. St. Maximilian Colbe, pray for us. St. Justin, pray for us. St. Columba, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin, Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless these chosen men, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify these chosen men, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify and consecrate these chosen men, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged, but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provisions for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, draw together in the diversity of its members and unite by, united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi, to minister in the former tabernacle. So now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of the church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel value, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. 
Believe what you read. Teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Matthew, receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Matthew, receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of Ordination. We now enter into the Liturgy of the Eucharist. As the altar is being prepared to receive the gifts of bread and wine, which will become the body and blood of Christ, those bringing forth the gifts include Alan and Marilyn Humrichhouse, parents of Deacon Humrichhouse, Alberta Landenslager, aunt and godmother to Deacon Furlong and Michael and Janice Zwilling, parents of Deacon Zwilling. The deacon of the Eucharist will be the newly ordained Deacon Matthew Zwilling. This role of the deacon at the altar during the Eucharistic celebration is very important. The deacons assist the priest and bishop celebrants and lend their ordained consecrated life to the liturgy.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We pray to the Lord in his name for our good and all the Holy Church. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set for us an example, accept, we pray, the oblation of your service and grant that offering ourselves as spiritual sacrifices, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, high priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord 
Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columba, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and George our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, these, your servants, who have been ordained today as ministers for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, are their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The newly ordained deacons will now assist in the distribution of the Eucharist, the bread of life, the new manna from heaven, the chalice of salvation, which will be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins, the special gift of the divine master to his community, is at the heart of the life of the church. Christ gives himself to us 
through the ministry of his ordained disciples.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and charity. Through Christ our Lord. in St. Coloba Cathedral Hall, sponsored by Youngstown Vocation Support Society. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be his sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his son Jesus Christ and ministers of unity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. This Mass of Ordination to the Diaconate has been brought to you through CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. I am Sister Joyce Canditti, the Director of the Office for Religious for the Diocese of Youngstown. On behalf of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown, I would like to thank you for watching this telecast and for prayerfully participating in it with us. We have witnessed Bishop Murray conferring the Sacrament of Ordination on Deacons Matthew Humrick House, Ryan Furlong, and Matthew Zwilling. Please remember them in your prayers so that they can have a long, fruitful, and holy ministry in the service of God's people. This live telecast will be broadcast in its entirety over ETC Ecumenical Television Channel on Monday, June 3rd at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., on Wednesday, June 5th at noon, and on Friday, June 7th at 10 a.m., and 8 p.m. Everyone here at St. Columba Cathedral, the central church of the Diocese of Youngstown, extends to you, the viewers, our own prayers and blessings. Please continue to support and pray for CTNY that has brought you this moving celebration. Have a good day and God be with you.